got a uh, we got a huge show for you today. We have an Anderson Live investigation. We're looking at a dangerous drug. It's actually a drug I never heard about called Smiles uh, that we want a lot of parents to know about. And also this kind of trend now of young people posting what they call trip reports, um, kind of documenting their drug experiences. Uh, the question is, is it encouraging kids to take drugs? Also, a student beating the odds, uh, a young man uh, who's just so impressive. Uh, you're really going to be just so impressed by this guy. We want you to meet him. And uh, and a big surprise for, for his entire uh, school. But first, let's get to the first 15. It's so great I'm to have you I'm having such here. a deja vu right now. It's so nice. <laughs> a lot of people probably don't know, Lisa and I... Like, my first job in TV was the thing called Channel One, which was a show seen in high schools and middle schools. Any Channel One students in the Anybody? audience? Okay, a couple. Okay. So it was big in the Midwest and the South, yeah. and it was in about half the schools in America. I started... I, start, I, start, I was 19 This is old. Lisa and I, <laughs> back then, 1994. I was going to say I started when I was 19, which was five years ago, but, you know... Yeah, and... Uh, right. right. I, was, I was rocking the Flock of Seagulls uh, swooped <laughs> haircut back then. My, I was a lot of plaid in the early 90s. Here's the funny thing about Anderson. So Anderson started at Channel One, I don't know if you know this, as a, as a fact checker. As right, a I was like the guy responsible for the accuracy of the program. Yeah, and then he went to go teach in Vietnam and he shot some video there and he brought it back and it was so compelling that the executive producer was like, let's put him on air, he's fantastic. But it's funny because you see in this, in this little photo here, Anderson was like this kind of skinny... Kind of lanky guy, right, with the, with the hair, and... I had no idea what I was doing. He, well, I, he, I, don't, I don't know that you thought you'd be on air, right? I had no, no, I had no plan of being on air. It never really occurred to me. I mean, I wanted to be, and I came up with this scheme, uh, which was to start going to wars to get on air, and, and a friend made a fake press pass for me. Actually, a guy worked at Channel One, yeah. and I borrowed a camera. I started going to wars. I snuck into Burma and, and hooked up with some students fighting the government. And Channel One put me on the air. Finally. Yeah, and he and and yeah, he's a skinny guy. And then fast forward years later, I see these billboards of Anderson looking like buff, veins showing, well, the, yeah. the muscles, like this, like strapping stallion. And every strapping woman, stallion. <laughs> every woman, when they find out that I'm friends with Anderson, they're like, Oh my God, can you hook me up? He's so hot. I'm like, Honey, sorry, <laughs> not quite on your team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I. Yeah. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, we did. We, did we can have... be really good friends. <laughs> exactly. We spoke really cool good friends. I'll listen to you. I'm a good listener. He's a great personality. <laughs> right, right, right. We, we had I'll compliment fun. you on your hair. <laughs> He'll decorate your room. <laughs> right. No, but you were, you were this, like, strapping guy on Channel One. You did go cover every war zone yeah, that was, happened. Uh... I mean, Anderson was and still is such an incredible journalist, and I respected him so much for that. But he was also the first guy to take me to my first gay bars. Is that right, really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> what, like 20, 21 years old? But the thing is, he would just leave me there. Well, listen, I, I mean... I mean that. Like, all of a sudden, and all these lesbians would be like, hey, girl. <laughs> like, oh, what do I do? Well, listen, at a certain time of the night, you know, you're like, all right, Lisa, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta stop babysitting. You. I guess, right, right. Well, it would have been nice if you would have told me you had well, to go, but yes. you just bail. There, I should have set some ground rules before we went. That, I, that, that at a certain point in the night, I, enough is enough, you and have I gotta to tell go. A young straight girl who's never been. Like, what's <laughs> well, I didn't know you had never that... been. Anyway, uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Of in fact, we have a clip of some of our stuff from Channel One. Let's take a look. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Ling. And I'm Anderson Cooper. This is Channel One News. You can hear shots ringing out all the time. That was kind of close. In Brazil, you have the biggest gap between, between uh, rich and poor than anywhere else in the world. Over the past couple of years at Channel One, it's been my privilege to cover many stories for you. Some happy, some sad, some even tragic. After months of watching the horror, the war and the starvation in Somalia, the world took action. Well, this week we'll be talking about abusive relationships. Even though the voting's over, the debate is still going on for some of these issues. We'll have continuing coverage of the aftermath of Election Day 94 tomorrow. And that's all the time we have for today. Wow. That's so cute. That's like the ghost of Christmas past. That's, God, I was young. That's really, that's depressing. I wish someone would have told me I had caterpillar eyebrows. Like, get a tweezer, <laughs> you know? Caterpillar like... eyebrows. The other depressing thing today, actually, I was in makeup right before this, and um, uh, Lana, my amazing uh, makeup artist, gave me a gift. She was like, oh, I saw this in a store, and it reminded me of you. <laughs> and, then she, and then she said to me, this is what you'll look like when you're dead. I was like... <laughs> Are you trying to cheer me up? Because 
Well, at least she didn't say it's what you look like when you're alive. Well, I, well that actually, that's what I said. I was like, actually, I kind of look like that right now. <laughs> but basically, this is what we'll all look like when we're dead, I think. So, anyway, there we go. Very nice of her. Yeah. yeah. I'm so excited about Halloween. I know we got some new stuff to talk about, but um, I love Halloween. Do you, do you know what you're going to dress up? I, I, I don't, but we are going to have a Halloween special uh, uh, live on, on Halloween. Uh, Kristen Chenoweth is going to be my co-host. And we got a great <laughs> Halloween yeah. special planned. And in fact... We, yesterday, uh, I've got a costume that I'm working on, and yesterday I, I had to have a mold made over my head. Take a look at the video here. This is, I'm not gonna be in the Blue Man group. It looks <laughs> like I'm gonna be the Blue Man group, but we're making a mold for my Halloween costume. How long did you have to stay in that thing? I was in that for about uh, for about 20 minutes, about 30 minutes. Yeah, 20 or 30 That's minutes. That's so claustrophobic. It was actually it was the most relaxing moment of my day. <laughs> I, I seriously would not mind being encased in that every day for like 30 minutes because no one can talk to you. You can't talk. You can't tweet. You can't do anything. You just sit there. I actually fell asleep. It was wonderful. Okay, so we need to keep this mold for Anderson yes. so we can put him in for 20 minutes so he can get some little. <laughs> it was, yes, it was. Yeah. yeah the, the, everybody, all my producers were very happy because I wasn't talking. To, I weren't. I, I wasn't talking. Well, I can't wait to find out what you're going to be in a mold. Yeah. This. Huh. I, look, I, he shakes. Yeah. Anyway, I'm very excited <laughs> about Halloween. A lot of news stories to talk about. Um, okay, so we're now with what 13 days to go before the election. Uh, most important election, you know, obviously, uh, uh, and Donald day. Trump and Gloria Allred, two people who seem to love the limelight, have found a way to try to insert themselves in in these last 13 days of the election. Donald Trump is saying that today he's going to have this big announcement, and there's all these reports that uh, allegedly he's found some, or somebody he knows has found some uh, divorce papers that Michelle Obama allegedly had once served on, on or, or written up uh, for the president, alleging that there were problems in their marriage many years ago. I have no idea if it's okay, true. Okay, is anybody else over Donald Trump? Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> like, you need to just go away. First of all, anyone who's been married three times has no business <laughs> criticizing someone else's divorce. Oh, yeah. You know? The audacity of this guy. Yeah. Unbelievable. And Gloria Allred is trying to open up some file and a divorce paper for somebody else that, that Mitt Romney testified in. It's like, you know what? We're 13 days away from this election. Let's yeah, just let's get this election. Let's just focus on the issues. It's true. I, I'm so tired of, of all these distractions and stuff. I'm so excited if for I never people. see that hair on Donald Trump again, I will be so happy. <laughs> Seriously. There's a lot going on. Yeah. There's a lot going on. A lot, there's a whole hair system. I, I think there are weights and pulleys involved. Oh. Um, Could blow away. Yeah. Okay, there's another story that I don't know if you've heard about this, which I found really creepy. Every now and then you hear about a website and you're like, wow, I can't believe this actually exists. This one does. This is a website and it's called myfreeimplants.com. It's basically for women who want breast implants, can't afford them. And so it's to link up women who want the breast implants with men who want to pay for them. So men will pay, sponsor a woman to get a breast implant. The deal is the woman basically has to kind of pitch her case to the guy, however that might happen, and also has to keep in touch with the gentleman and provide before and after photos to the man for like six months afterward. And I love on the website picture, it's like some cheesy guy with two women draped on him, like, <laughs> you pay for breast implants, women will yeah, drape themselves gonna, all over you. They're gonna flock to you. It's just so kind of, and the, the, the thing is, invest in breast. That's their, their, their slogan. <laughs> Of course, someone who's been lacking all of her life is like trying to read the small print right now, and no, but it's that's that's disgusting. Right, and of course, I'm like, wow, she has great hair. But, um, <laughs> of course, I know. Yeah. I was wondering where you were going to go with that, talking about the breasts. Yeah, um, the uh, we're, yeah, we got a lot of ahead. Uh, we got more in the first. Have few you ever seen breasts, by the way? I'm of course, curious. I've seen breasts. Yes. <laughs> like real? In yes, breasts. real breasts. Yes. Okay. We'll talk about that. We have a lot more coming up in the first 15. Lisa's got a big announcement. Kate Hogan, uh, a news editor of People.com. Lisa Ling is my co-host today, my old friend uh, Lisa Ling. 
And uh, today on the show, we're looking into a, a new uh, drug called uh, Smiles, which I'd never heard about, uh, which uh, we want uh, parents to know about. And we're also going to meet you, introduce you to a student who's really beating the odds. He's really going to inspire you. Amazing Just an incredible story, kid, what yeah. he's been through. Uh, still a lot of, of other news to get to in the first 15. First of all, you've got a big announcement to make. I do have an announcement. I'm so excited I, that you're making this announcement <laughs> on this show. Well, I mean, you're, you're, I've known you for 20 years now, yeah. and I, I thought that you would be the first person I'd love to share on your show. Uh, that I'm pregnant. Wow! <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's really nice. I, thank you. I, I, I was trying to keep it quiet for a long time, but now I'm starting to get to the point where it looks like I just have this big beer belly, so I figure I better share it publicly uh, before people actually wow. think I have and this that's, Wow. That's yeah. the baby? Okay, so look at this, this ultrasound. This is my crazy baby jumping around in my wow in my stomach. Yeah, and this was <laughs> the baby's literally jumping. I know, I know. I, I, every time I show this, people are astounded. They cannot believe that's actually happening. And this I've is never when seen that. That's... The baby was about two inches long, and I was so terrified. I called the doctor. I'm like, Are you sure it's normal? <laughs> uh -huh. But I just, I just hope that this doesn't mean that she's a complete like spastic. Child when she grows up, and my so husband's you're like, "You're saying can't she? she? Can't she just nap? It's gonna be a girl. Yeah, it, 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 it is a girl. Yeah. It's so yeah, it's I can't believe, I can't believe this, this image. Isn't that unbelievable? We, are we showing this? Because it's just, it's incredible. And, and she's two inches. Well, this, this was when she was 12 weeks, so she was about two inches. Now I'm, I'm quite a bit further along. But wow. at that time, yeah, I was just shocked. Imagine something two inches long jumping up and down. And I didn't feel a thing. I mean, I just thought I had gas, you know? <laughs> I didn't know, but. <laughs> Wait yeah. a minute, I'm, I've been feeling a little gas. <laughs> that's so, that's, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Yeah, do you, I you. Do, like, has it, like, changed things already? Or do you feel different? I, I, I've been so lucky with this pregnancy. I didn't have any morning sickness. And other than the fact that I have this pooch now, I, fe I felt totally <laughs> normal. No, I do, I do. I mean, it's. And my boobs are enormous, which is like <laughs> so exciting. I can barely close my jackets anymore, but it's so awesome. Uh, my husband is beside himself. But I, there's a website I can tell you about. I know, that. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I don't think I didn't notice. Yeah, but I. But I've been trying to really um, eat healthy. I mean, I've always been a really healthy eater, but I, I've been particularly sensitive about it too. And I, I brought a gift to the audience members today. Um, I, I've been working with this. Um, this company called Nectrest, which is this natural sweetener, it's made from monk fruit, which is uh, monk fruit, fruit from, from Asia. And it's actually, it's delicious. I, I use it in my decaf coffee every day. And uh, I brought it So it's, an all, it's like an all natural sweetener. It's all natural, no chemicals. And I've used, you know, natural uh, or sweeteners for a long time, but this one is completely natural. And uh, I brought a box for everyone in the audience. So <laughs> enjoy. That's great. But I, I also, I don't know if you heard about this story. Wait, well, I, I also, um, I, I, I want to give you a gift um, that uh, we, oh, we no. came up with. This oh, is yes. a, an old Channel One mic, but it's actually a baby rattle. <laughs> so. That is so awesome. Oh, thank you. I love it. I love it. Just for my little jumping bean baby. Yeah. But I don't know if you heard about this story. In, in Long Island, there's this clinic that is offering, or is doing this contest and offering women the chance to win a round of in vitro fertilization. So it's like a, it's like a raffle. I heard I read it. It's a raffle that you can win. Yeah. And you have to basically women like that website uh, for the breast. Uh, women have to make videos. That's right. To women kind of sell been, themselves yeah. of why they should get IVF. Share their emotional stories. Women who've been longing. And on the one hand, it's great that women are given this opportunity. But on the other hand, it kind of is a testament to the fact that in vitro is so expensive and it's so yeah. it's really resigned to people who have the resources. It, it's, it's, it's about crazy ten expensive. to fifteen thousand dollars. Around, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, everyone should have the opportunity to, to try and have a baby, but I, I don't know. It's just such yeah. a. It's well, it's a, also I read with this raffle when you win, like the the people from the clinic show up on your doorstep with like balloons, like as if it's like the the prize patrol from Publishers Clearinghouse. Exactly. I know. know I know. Which I mean, it just seems a little odd. Something odd saying, about what, it. What, would would people raffle chemotherapy? Like you just won a round yeah. of chemotherapy. Uh, Wendy you know, on Facebook is saying, sure. Why are only wealthy people allowed to have children? And that's a good point. I mean, this does give access to people who who can't afford IVF. And as you said, it's so. Uh, it's so incredibly expensive. Elizabeth says, knowing full well the struggles of infertility, I would. It's also, I think, a way for, the, the, way, the reason these clinics are doing it is they're small clinics and it's a way for them to basically promote themselves. They're saying it gives them 
publicity. Sure, and, uh, I, and I get that, but how about making IVF just more available in general to women well, who are yeah, having absolutely. challenges? You know, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah. Um, there's another uh, also story you're probably going to see a lot about, which is Superman. Uh, you love. I had no idea you had this. I was comic well. Book I'm I'm a comic book geek, and I so idea. yeah, no, I'm a comic book geek. So in the new Superman, he's now quit his job at the Daily Planet, and because he's fed up with the state of journalism, and he's <laughs> it says he's going to go and work at a blog. Um, <laughs> so our our blogger in the audience from from People.com was probably excited about this. All oh, this more competition for the blog world. But, um, but it was interesting because basically Superman critiques modern journalism saying it's, you know, it's too focused on the frivolous and that the fact that you know, newspapers will... Are you it, writing this? Are you writing this? No, no, no. It's, uh, the, the editor of the paper is saying that you know, if, um, if you have to have a reality star to get people to pick up uh, a paper, you know, so be it. And, and Clark Kent doesn't want to be reporting on reality stars. So he's going to go. And, and the, the editor of the, this, uh, who wrote this was like, He's more likely to wind up with the Huffington Post or whatever. But I'm like, by the way, have you clicked on the Huffington Post lately? Because, first of all, they're just regurgitating everybody else's work. Right. And second, it's a lot of salacious stuff. All yeah. the stuff that actually gets a lot of the traffic on the Huffington Post. And I'm not bashing the Huffington Post. It's, it's a great site, as are many Don't sites. Don't you wish Superman would have stood up to, to the, the industry and just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue the news, in the newspaper industry and long live newspaper? Don't you wish he would have? Yeah, but he's not. Have, I know. That, yeah, right. <laughs> He's a, I, I don't man. get why Superman is working, though. I mean, if I was Superman, I, I would I would just be out saving lives and, and then kicking back, you know, and, and, and yeah. watching Honey Boo Boo in my spare time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. All right, we got uh, we got to take another break. Up next, a dangerous and deadly new drug called Smiles uh, that every parent should, should know about. We'll be right back.